We are live out here in the Oregon District where there was a shooting earlier this evening. Now we're hearing reports of multiple fatalities in this area. There is a lot of destruction here off of Kessler Road in Miami County. Take a look at this home. Now the roof is completely ripped off. Now when people call 911, oftentimes first responders find that those people are lonely, tired, or they didn't take their medicine properly. But either way, they still have to jump into their vehicles and make that run. She sat there and kind of put her hands on her head and she told me that actually one of the victims uh, who is deceased was her cousin. Well, the message is quite simple. He is urging people to hug others. Now he's leaving messages on napkins like this that say hug somebody today and he hopes those messages can help others. Well, this altercation all started when the movie theater's manager asked Shane Christopher to get off his phone. He was on it during the movie. We're off of North of Dixie. Now we went into a neighborhood and we see a little bit of action going on over here. Now you can probably hear the chainsaw going in the background, but I am 411. I'm standing on a stump that is about maybe three feet tall. As you can see, this still towers way above me, and I'm told that it might be even 25 feet tall, but take a look from this vantage point. Because of the rain, it has cooled down, but we have a thermometer out here. It's reading at 80. Earlier before the rain, it was reading at about 100 degrees. Now take a look at this. Obviously, different surfaces are going to have different temperatures. This is reading at about 90 degrees. Earlier, it was much hotter. For the last day, the Pattersons have been dealing with this small shards of glass throughout their minivan, but the real mess was in the back. They have had to make a lot of changes to keep people safe, including adding these markers on the ground to keep people socially distanced, plus these extra precautions. Turn the corner and you're on Mulch Road. In fact, if this debris pile were a neighborhood, all of this could fill the space of one and a half wine houses. There's about 30 or 40 of these tombstones that have been toppled over. Now, as you can imagine, these are pretty heavy. These can be at least a few hundred pounds. Well, as you can see, there's still a number of stones that are here. There's probably at least a dozen or so that are out here that were promised to customers. Now, we talked to the current owners who told us that Darren Boykins would tell their customers that their stones simply weren't ready. I want it done. It's my son. Judy King hasn't been able to properly grieve her son. The picture, it was supposed to go right in here. Her son's headstone is just laying behind the American Memorial Monuments business. His headstone has been out in the back for five months. King says she had purchased the headstone from Darren Boykin, who ran the business. I have been calling. They keep putting me off. I've been down here three or four times. They said his headstone wasn't ready. According to the current business owner, Boykin is no longer with them. The business's financial investor, Robert Katz, says he's filed a police report against Boykin after a number of complaints came flooding in from upset customers. We looked into the finances of the company, where the money was going, and uh, we found some disturbing information. Katz's business partner showed us a list of more than 40 clients who allegedly have also been taken advantage of. These are stones that have been sold and paid for. Why prey on people like this in their time of grief? While Katz couldn't go into detail about the current investigation, the business has been shut down for now, and the current employees are working to get the headstones returned to clients. We're going to try to straighten this out in take care of the people that have come here for help. King says she's putting her faith in cats, but her heart breaks seeing her son's headstone laying on a wooden pallet. Part of my heart is laying there. We reached down to the Miami Township Police. They say this is still under investigation. We'll continue to monitor this story for any developments. Reporting live, Monica Castro, News Center 7. Now to the fourth. Well, it happened at this rock star pro wrestling facility here in Belmont. Ganger, of course, was humbled by the award, but he told me multiple times tonight that the police are the true heroes of that night. It, it's nice coming back out to normal sea. When this is your idea of a normal night. 
It's not surprising you have the courage to do this. I was grabbing as many people as I could, yell, get inside, get inside. Everyone was getting inside. Jeremy Ganger was the bouncer at Ned Peppers in the Oregon district the night a gunman took nine lives. I was prepared to lay down for everyone in there and for my co-workers. For those who know him, like Gigi Bradley, his actions come as no surprise. Just like a year ago, he was on the local news for running in a burning building to save a dog. You know, he's just a selfless, you know, caring guy who will put his own safety aside to help others. He's a hero. Oh, yeah. He saved the day. He's a good dude. He's a real good dude. The Modern Woodman of America presented Ganger its Hometown Hero Award for his actions during the Oregon District shooting. Believe it or not, all this means, means the world to me. When I asked Ganger if he'd wrestle in Friday night's show. I'm not tempted to wrestle at all. But wrestling is about showmanship. Beautiful Ryan Taylor. And when his honor was challenged. Thank you for the award. Ganger rose to the occasion. <laughs> Well, when I first shared Tammy's story, she felt defeated because FEMA had denied her six times. But take a look behind me. You see those roofers out in action fixing up her roof. A local roofing company saw our story and wanted to help her out. The sound of a circular saw roaring wouldn't be the sound most people enjoy waking up to. They showed up this morning a little unannounced. But it was a great way to wake up for me. But for Tammy Helgeson, it's a welcome sound. That's because after four months of living with a damaged roof, it'll be repaired. It's going to be fixed. It's going to be fixed by people who took it into their own heart to do something for me. I am grateful. All thanks to Colette Roofing. As soon as I clicked on the link and heard Tammy's story, I just knew we had to help. Helgeson had been denied for FEMA six times. She'd given up hope. I just could tell that she was really in need. Uh, she started crying, which definitely tugged on my my heart a little bit, string. So as soon as I saw that, I just knew that we had to get down here and do whatever we could. Colette said the roof was in bad shape and would have been more of a hazard come winter if it hadn't been fixed. Most certainly there was a lot of damage created by the tornado. I have no clue why FEMA denied it. Because she is so grateful for a new roof under her head. She wants to give thanks the best way she knows how. I've offered to cook a meal because I can cook. I can do Italian, German. I will love to feed everybody that is here to show my appreciation. Because the way to a person's heart is through their stomach. If you ask anybody who knows me, they'll tell you I throw down on some food. Well, we even noticed that there are some roofers out there fixing up her garage. Now, that's an added bonus for Tammy. Now, the roofing set company said that it would cost about $10,000 to do all of the repairs, all of this being done for free.